Hello everyone and welcome to the Council of Elrond where we discuss all things Lord of the Rings. I'm your host Dave and I'm joined by your other host Johnny of course and today we have a wonderful guest who's going to help us break down the seventh episode of The Rings of Power entitled The Eye. So Helen was the first one to invite us onto YouTube and onto her channel The Clueless Fangirl and she's one of the nerdiest and coolest girls in the Tolkien world. So Helen, welcome to the council. Would you like to introduce yourself and tell our listeners where they can find you? Hello. Uh, well, you know, I mean, I, I've been a fan of yours for qu quite some time. The fact, you know, I did fall in love with your uh, um, Twitter um, meme meme channel, as I call it. <laughs> um, and I was like, oh, uh, I really like these boys and they have some humor. And I think this is very important in times like these, you know, to <laughs> have some, some humor. Don't take and, yourself too uh, seriously. No, and don't bitch about everything, please. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I think uh, we're, we're on the same lines here. Yeah, and my name is Helen, and I have a very niche, nerdy, uh, tiny YouTube channel talking mainly about this in Marillion. Um, and um, yeah, first and second age stuff. So more the unknown uh, Tolkien um, weird stories about elves and baddies. That's my thing under the Clueless Fangirl. And um, yeah, thanks for the invite. And uh, we, we kind of built a really cool of the last year's um, talking tuba, as we call ourselves, I think, um, community. And mm -hmm. the boys are for a while now, almost a year now, part of it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And yeah, and I really like, you know, that all of us interact with each other and invite each other to, to these kind of things. And um, we all have different opinions but i think that that makes it good right um and interesting oh, and yeah we we have civil discussions uh even if we have different opinions so that's a good thing and yeah it's a lot yes. of fun being able to converse online and use things yeah. like this discord or whatever and be able to just jump onto other people's channels uh and it's really good yeah it's great we're loving it yeah yeah, yeah. it's great and I so and sorry. i think a lot of people have the idea that we don't like each other sometimes because that that does happen in the fandoms right no. i mean <laughs> hashtag star wars uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a big star wars fan so you know that is very, partly very toxic but i think at least we can say all of us uh can say we're, we're actually friends <laughs> sure we are quite civil so if you're looking for helen's channel you can you you can just search on youtube the clueless fangirl but all of her links to her youtube and her twitter and everywhere else will be in our description below so yeah go check we're gonna out. break down we, yeah go ahead check her out if you're into villains and you're into elves and all that kind of stuff you're gonna love helen so we're gonna break down this episode location by location rather than scene by scene but first don't forget guys leave a like if you're watching us on youtube and don't forget to subscribe and a huge thank you to all of our patrons and a special thank you to jack knightley you have been told many lies of middle earth so first of all actually before we break down this episode helen how are you enjoying the series so far as a whole without without this most recent <laughs> episode have you been enjoying it is it mostly good mostly bad what are your overall thoughts on the show oh well thank you for asking me this question now um well the thing the the thing is in the beginning obviously all of us you know nads who are deep into the law who have read all the additional material you know we thought oh we'll get this and this and this because they teased it and they you know um we saw hints of it in trailers and stuff like that i think i'm at and in the beginning, I was really disappointed, but I think I'm at that stage where I realized, you know, this is, it's not the books. They don't have certain rights, even with the rights they do have. They took a lot of liberties. Some I, I liked, some I didn't like. Um, and I think I accepted for what it is. It is a fantasy show for me, loosely based on Tolkien. It's, um, you know, like I love Shadows, Shadows of War and Shadows of Mordor. Yeah, Shadow of Mordor. Um, yeah. Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War. Is it also Shadow of War? The second yeah, one. Shadow War. Shadow of Mordor. Mm. I think that's the two. Yeah, things. yeah. And for me, at this point, not kidding, the 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 <laughs> series is 
as much canon as those games are. That doesn't mean I don't enjoy it, right? Um, but I think I had to switch something um, after see, uh, episode four or something like that here to 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 be happy with what I see because it is there, there are great moments, right? And if I wouldn't be this Tolkien nerd, I think I actually would enjoy it more. Mm. But you know, I can't help it. Um, so I accepted it. I would rate it. It's a six out of 10 if we talk numbers or something like that. And um, yeah, I'm not a hater. I'm not a super fan. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be back in Middle Earth. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, it's a, it's a great way of looking at it, especially the comparison with the games. I think that's absolutely the attitude we need to adopt because I yeah. too also love playing those games and I don't think like, oh my God, Talion, who is Talion in the books? So I need to learn more yeah. about him. I just I just enjoy it for who What it happened is. to Keller Brimbor? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what Why is he a wraith? <laughs> yeah. He's, or, he's or so that, cool in that, that game good. though. Yeah, he's oh my cool. god, yeah. He's my head cannon, Killer Brimbo. And the thing yeah. is, they don't give us Killer Brimbo. Where was he in this episode? Like I was yeah, like, I no, again. I we'll get on to that. We'll get on to that. But first we're gonna start with uh all the Harfoot scenes. So brace yourselves, guys. Uh the first scene <laughs> we get of them is when they come upon the volcanic rock damage and Sadok says new evil is rising, which for me, it was very similar to Saruman's line. A new power is rising. And exactly, a new power is rising. But <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this was a, an interesting start to to the Harfoot scenes. <clears throat> mm -hmm. What did you guys make on this? I'll go to I'll go to you, Helen, first, since you're a lovely guest. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, first of all, the whole Harfoot thingy, and we didn't have them last episode, did we? No. Last no. episode? No, no right? Not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I do see the criticism of people, but then I do think, you know, they are, they don't have weapons. They don't, they, they um, mimic a stage of us, you know, during a migration period, especially in Europe, right? And um, I think that that happened in our real time. And you these people did leave other people behind and all that, you know, that I, I, I don't hate the whole concept of the Harfoots. Um, and I, I like the character of Sadak in a way. I don't like that he's influenced by that woman. Is that his wife? I don't Marva. understand. Who's that? I think yeah. so. I, th I think so. I, that's, that's what it seemed like in this episode. It seemed they were more of a couple than ever. Yeah, ever I, 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 I never thought, thought that, that was, before, but yeah, I just thought it was like a fellow, you know, smart Person she was one, yeah. one of the elders of the group. One of the scholars. Yeah. 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 Um, so whoever <clears throat> she is, Mava. Um, I, I don't like that he's that easily influenced because he should be the boss, you know, of these people. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, I've, I've, I was okay with that. See, I mean. Yeah. yeah the, like the way, the way that he spoke to her later on in the episode when he said, can you just for once not be right? Yeah. It seemed like something you'd say to your partner or to your wife yeah. or something like that. Like, you know, it seemed like yeah. that's, that's kind of one thing. Don't be hasty. We'll get, we'll get onto that scene later. Uh, right. Johnny, sorry, but just, oh, oh. just the relationship is what I'm, what I'm <laughs> Yeah, of course. No, uh, Johnny, I like uh, the way with nature, you know, the, the, how they interact with nature, how they understand course. nature very differently, like the elves do, who are also allegedly very close to nature, right? So I really like the, the portrayal of that earlier stage of humanity, right? Um, I, I mm. think that's cool. Yeah, it is. And in the same scene, we get the stranger basically assaulting a tree and speaking a foreign language. And John, what did you make of this? Did you think it sounded a little bit like black speech? I'm sure someone out there in the Twitter world has, you know, translated whatever he Somebody said. Somebody translated, already. yeah. Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course he did. I just haven't had a chance to look on Twitter yet. No, no, I just literally finished watching the episode like a half an hour before we jumped on this on the stream. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I haven't had a chance to, to, to see everyone else's reactions. I have no idea what people out there even think of this episode so far. So we're coming in fresh. But, um... Yeah, I didn't really take too much. I didn't pay too much attention to what he actually said. Um, I mean, the music that they put over it made it seem like, you know, that's they're just 
they're really Red playing herring. with the, yeah they're playing with us the whole time whenever uh, there's any scene with the stranger he does something good and he gives this look of complete innocence on his face and then suddenly they they cut back to him again and he has this evil look on his face and there's the music changes so they've just been doing that like every pretty much every single scene he's been in so i'm kind of getting bored of that now i want to just have an yeah. idea more of where it's going because I think they're just doing things a little bit like over and over again. I'm like, okay, that was good, but we don't need to have the exact same thing just again. So I'm I'm ready to have an idea more of who the stranger is uh, instead of just this mystery. But um, with that scene, well, first of all, um, before that even happened, I just wanted to point out that Sadok, when they arrive in the area, he says that uh, his great grandfather or someone told about uh, mountains who used to spit fire, yeah. but he said mountains to the yeah. south. So we also, that gives us an idea of where they are, of their location. Yeah. We know that they're basically North Mordor, I suppose, or mm. North of Mordor, but maybe they're actually in Mordor already. But um, Wait, but didn't they talk about Greenwood? That, that, what? he was what talking they... later on, it's, it's later on, um, he's saying something about Greenwood. Did I just dream that? Oh, maybe. I think he's, I think, I think he's mentioning remember. Green. And they've, it's weird because it was named Greenwood later on, so I was very confused. Maybe, maybe yeah. I dreamt literally that. talking about a green wood. <laughs> well, I, I, I definitely missed that. I, I, I must have just um, been not paying attention to that exact part. But I just, because uh, when he said, first of all, that mountains to the south, that's bit fire, I was like, okay, well, they're possibly yeah. in, the, in the north of that. Then. But then if he's mentioned Greenwood, well, then I don't know, maybe that's, maybe that's wrong now. But I mean, it's a bit, uh, it was just something that I picked up on. That was just, and then he also said, um the thing that sounded like a new power is rising when it's a new evil is rising i think that that's i yeah. kind of took my attention yeah. then away well yeah. but um you have also... to take everything he says with a pinch of salt because like he speaks a lot of nonsense as well but this is so... the second time then also that sadok said something that's kind of like a prophecy like the last time that he said yeah. that he's he's, 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 he's heard of he's heard of um people turning into stars mm. so that was yeah. um like mentioning that of uh, erendil but then in this one yeah. he says that um again i i I do get a chuckle out of the, the Harford sometimes. And when, when Marva was like saying, what, what's he saying to the tree? And then uh, Sadiq yeah. said, little words so that the tree can understand. Yeah, and, then, yeah. and she was like, trees don't speak. And he said, some trees do. And yeah. it's like, yeah. again, that's, uh, that's again, you're kind of going, how does he know these things? But I mean, we can just accept it that maybe the lore has been passed much. down in books. And, you know, he's always reading yeah. his big giant books. So I'm, I'm happy for him to just kind of have this random bits of knowledge just floating around without really analyzing it too much. So I think that's I think that's fine. And um, yeah, I don't even really remember what the question was. Uh, oh, yeah, well, no. what did I think? Yeah, I, I don't have really have, a, have, a, have an answer to what I think of um, the speech, if it was black speech or not. It, it sounded ominous. But then again, I think that was because of the music and the way that the showrunners wanted us to feel from that scene. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, and I think it is interesting how you mentioned Sadok. He kind of knows more than he should. He, it's kind of like he's breaking the fourth wall. He's he's kind of like the Rings of Powers version of Deadpool. So um, <laughs> we get the... Uh, Sadok has a, a lovely... He's as nice brutal as well. Chat. Yeah, he is brutal as well. He's cutting off all limbs and all sorts. But he has a nice chat with the stranger uh, to send him on his merry way and he gives him a map of the constellations. On his way. And I thought this was quite a nice scene. And like Johnny mentioned yeah. previously, we, we see the, the bad with the stranger and then we see the good with the sprout coming out of the tree, which yeah. suggests that there is goodness in him. And yes, maybe this is a overused trope that they keep going back to. Uh, Nori gives him an apple and then the stranger theme plays here with full orchestral violins and I thought yeah. it was absolutely wonderful the music there and then basically stranger takes the apple and leaves so uh, Helen any any thoughts on how the rest of this whole scene played out his goodbye no. well the thing I mean you I really liked you know the because I like the character of Nori for one thing, she because a lot of people are saying, you know, female Frodo, blah, blah, blah. But she actually started off ex the exact opposite of Frodo because she said right from the get go, she always said, I know this is my destiny. I'm des I was destined to find this guy. I was destined, you know, to help him. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not just a hobbit. Um, this is how she started, right? And Frodo was the one, oh, I wish it wasn't me who has to carry the ring. I wish this, I wish this wasn't our time, blah, blah, blah. Right? So, so well. he was very, yeah, yeah. so he was very reluctant. She was very willing. They literally mm. started off opposites, right? And then 
they in a way switched places because now at the end, Nori, and this is in a way, you know, sad. Yeah, she she switched then later on again. But she said, you know what? Maybe I'm I am just a hobbit. Maybe I. So this is very interesting mm. because a lot of people mm. are comparing these two, and they actually have really the opposite journey. But then, yeah. um, her and and Poppy. Poppy is her name, right? Poppy. They literally Perfect. translate everything in German, which like I, I watched it at oh, six a.m. Really? this morning. So, so it's horrible. Like they translate names, they translate um like, oh, it's like Bill Chilo. Oh, it's a, uh, yeah. yeah, in Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, they yeah, yeah. they do, they what's, do that. So in what's Spanish? Poppy's name in German? Uh, I forgot, but no Poppy. <laughs> it's not <laughs> no, Poppy. It's, it's different. <laughs> It's going to the loo. Um, but uh, no, I forgot. But like Shelob is Kankra, which is in no correlation. It doesn't what? even make sense. Yeah, it, it's, I mean, don't. Kankra. I, 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 Kankra. Oh, that's like those Kankra things you get in your spinne. mouth, like a, like a mouth ulcer. Kankar. And that was her <laughs> call. <laughs> I mean, I, that I, is I wild. Don't ask. That's so annoying that they change everything, mm. but. Um, yeah, I suppose it's it, funny. It's, it's nice it's to have a translation as well. Mm. Yeah, so I watched it in German. So po Poppy, yes. Um, so they they then go and and follow um, him, mm. right? Um, is it just them, or are others coming? I didn't fully get that. Are they all going now? No, um, so no, just that's just four. Yeah, of them. Just just a couple okay. of them, yeah, about four. Uh, but we we we'll yeah. get onto that because we see when the stranger has actually damaged this tree. Um, he has damaged this one tree and I think all the rest of the trees are just damaged from the, the volcanic activity but yeah. we see in the next scene Nori awakes to apples everywhere and for mm -hmm. me this was a little bit reminiscent of the Shire just the way everyone was you know rooting around grabbing apples picking stuff off trees and all is yeah. well until Poppy spots the large footprint and we get our first glimpse of the mystics in this episode and of course we see them yeah. burning the caravans and for me this is the second time that nori has completely doomed the race of all harfoots so johnny I... what do you make of everything that transpired here oh i just um i've no idea what she was thinking like why would she get involved did she think that she was going to be able to you know trick the these mystics who have obviously just like traveled across half the the globe in order to try and catch or to try and catch up with um the stranger and suddenly mm. she thinks oh i'll just say he went he went the other way and then that'll yeah. be fine so i thought it was a bit of a silly plan um but mm. um i don't know again i mean it's it's strange to put yourself in her position it's probably well i mean if i put myself in her position what would i have done i would have just stayed silent and hid because these people look uh, really <laughs> scary and they're giants and they don't look very friendly at all so um, and I think she knew that immediately. She was trying to throw them yeah. off the trail of the stranger yeah. as well. So, um, so I don't. But can I just jump back for a second? Because I thought of something there when um, mm -hmm. when Helen, when you said that um, Nori has this complete change of her initial um, that she sort of has this realization: I'm just a hard foot. I'm not really. Yeah. Well, and then later she gets back on track with what she believed before. That's happened as well before when we saw Bronwyn when she was yeah. really you know she gave the big speech trying to encourage all the people to fight yeah and then half of them left and then like for, she has this moment of doubt where she kind of speaks to her and she's like yeah. maybe we should just go and join them and then she gets put back on track as well and then also in this episode we see elendil uh who is you know faithful to the elves and now he seems to towards the end of this episode be having a moment of doubt as well and he is yeah. in despair and i'm assuming he's going to be put back on track as well in the next episode so it's kind of like it's yeah. cool that we're getting these kind of similarities through those different stories as well that yeah. uh, they're all going through these little str struggles so i just want to point that out as well yeah, yeah. um but yeah you you so. had a very similar one in the og movies with and that was one of the one that stood really out to me was um you know and um, with theoden right um in the um battle of helm's deep because he does lose hope at one point again mm. although he was really charged up you know um and and then he does ho lose hope again but then mm, he, yeah. he 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 regains his strength and, and it is over it, yeah yeah, yeah, that part, yeah. <laughs> still yeah. one of the best scenes ever yeah. ever oh, filmed and amazing. written but yeah anyway um 
Yeah, and I and I was I don't know what do you guys think. I mean, you you know all the fan art and everything, right? So the scene where all of a sudden everything was green and blossoming, you know, from literally death, um, resurrection, that really reminded me if you know Luthien or if you know her mother, right, um, Melian, or if you know Yavanna, you know, the queen of the earth, or, or the Greek myth about um, Gaia, um, mother of the earth, that is very reminiscent to, you know, where they walk, flowers spring. Sure. Um, mm. And it was very, because I still thought in last episode, he is a Balrog or confused Balrog or whatever. <laughs> but but now I'm really on the on the train of nah he is a blue wizard. I don't think he's Gandalf. Yeah. I don't think he's Saruman. Uh, I don't think he's uh, Radagast. I think he's a blue or random other wizard we've never heard of. Um but I do oh. think hmm. he worked for Yavanna back hmm. in um but, you know, back in Valinor, and that's where he learned this art or this, you know, to make mm. the earth blossom again, because this is what she stands for. She's mother, you know, she's mother sure. nature, mother of the earth. So I really liked uh, that. And they mentioned her in, in last week's episode as well, not by yes. name, but they basically no. they basically name dropped her. So that was kind of mm. cool as well. And But it was nice yes. to see the, him just walking away and leaving a trail of daisies behind him sort of a thing. That was kind of kind of fun. Yeah. But you yeah. just mentioned uh, Luthien as well. And I think there was another thing in this episode that was very reminiscent of Luthien and Baron's meeting when Galadriel talks about um, how her and... Um, I don't want to be jumping too far ahead, but uh, how her and Celeborn meet, and she says that she oh. was um, dancing uh, in. Yeah. She says we met in a glade of flowers, which just reminded yeah. me of uh, Baron and Luthien's meeting, and it's just yeah. very elven as well, but just a glade of flowers. Of course, where else would you meet? That's of course, just uh, a yeah. yeah. classic. But um, sorry, I shouldn't be jumping ahead to that part. So. Next question, Dave. No, that's fine. We'll, um, we'll we're, get we're, to the missing person report later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're nearly done with the, the, the Harfoots. Basically, the, the final scene of the Harfoots is Largo trying to rile them up with a speech saying, we are the Harfoots and we aren't great for digging jewels, but we stay true to each other. And then Nori basically gathers her team of Avengers to go. Now, I didn't believe... <laughs> I didn't believe Marva and Sadok's change of character in this scene at all. I thought it was it was quite yeah. jarring, just the fact that she was like, well, Sadok, I think you should go too, because, you know, Lenny Henry signed up for five seasons of The Rings of Power. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I, I actually love Sadok. I really like his character, but I just felt like this was a bit of a cop-out. He should have stayed with the Harfoots because he's like the protector of their whole yeah. tribe. But, yeah. you know, they just wanted Lenny Henry to... To, to be in season two and season three and now we have the f is it four johnny is it four people yeah because it's the on? two it's 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 um nori it's and her girls. mother poppy yeah. and uh and uh, i would have preferred largo i really like largo yeah largo's great i love largo and oh, yeah. he's actually doesn't annoy too. me so um mm. yeah uh, he's yeah, the only so one of the hard it's really that i'm like his accent is good <laughs> Yeah, so what, what did you make of this um this riling up scene johnny, oh the accent you? the accent or, thingy yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are well, you really uh, thrown off? I, Is that really that bad? Oh, we've as, talked about it so many times. Yeah, as 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 Irishmen, we get offended by a lot of the Harfoots accents. <laughs> we it don't sounds, get offended. Yeah, ah, no, I'm only joking. Uh, but I I do like Largo's accent because he's actually an Irish man, that actor. So uh, I think oh. he's doing a pretty good okay. job. But um, Sadox is weird. Sometimes I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. And sometimes it sounds like it's some sort of a like irish jamaican accent or something mixed together or something that's kind of <laughs> weird as well but uh it's definitely i i really um nori's mother i can't remember uh what's her, oh what's her name um uh, i can't remember her name i can't remember her name uh i forgot rosie or rosie no. is it rosie or, i think marigold or rosie or something like that marigold oh. yeah maybe it's marigold i don't know i don't know it's i don't know it's something like a flower or something yeah. like that anyway yeah. um her yeah, her accent kind of got him. I think it's it was better in this episode. I think she's yeah, kind of maybe so growing it in, growing into it a little bit. So, but definitely in the first like first episode that we saw, her, I was like, oh. But anyway, I don't. But it's want not to her mother. Anymore. It's not. It's not. Sorry, her mother yeah, her stepmother. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Stepmother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Sorry, that is true. Um, what I would say about this scene is I liked Largo's speech. I thought it was really nice. Uh, he says we stay true to each other no matter how the path winds or how steep it gets. And I thought it was really lovely and really heartfelt. Well, I thought it actually would have been heartfelt <laughs> if we hadn't already found out how like brutal the Harfoots were and how they just leave <laughs> people behind willy-nilly and yeah. de-caravan de people for minor offences. I thought that it was like... It's, it was a bit strange because I, I would have I would have liked if they were a nomadic tribe who put, uh, you know, their relationships with their neighbors above all else. And we'll do anything yeah. we can. We'll risk any danger to try and help our fellow our fellow Harfoots. But we know that it's just like, oh, you invite a stranger in. That's a decaravanning offense. And it's like, oh, well, we'll just let her off this one time because she's really young and she doesn't know what she's doing. So it was an accident. Also, yeah. it, was a, it was a guy who fell from the sky. So it's a bit of a, you know an outlier of uh, a situation. So I think it's a bit weird how they're just very brutal in one situation. And then the next one, they're just like, oh, yeah. oh we stick true to each other. That's what we do. We're Harfoots. And I was kind of like, yeah, again, and then they I just was... abandon all their like old habits and just go like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave the tribe and I'm going to go and try and find quick. a stranger. And yeah. I agree with you, Dave, that I think I, I could have got the feeling or I could have believed that maybe Sadok could have been convinced because he seems like a big softy that yeah, they'd does. be like they'd be like come on Sadok let us and he'd be like oh fine but this is the last time now or whatever yeah. you know <laughs> but um, Marva who's just the whole time been completely anti uh, yes. the stranger suddenly not just yeah. kind of going I start to accept but kind of going you should go with him Sadok and you should go and lead this whole a uh, protection party or whatever it is or uh, hunting down the stranger so and what are they going to do take on those mystics that they've like they have no chance i mean it's no. ridiculous well i mean when it first when nori first brought it up and then poppy was like i'm coming with you i was like okay here's the sam ganji joining frodo, frodo and i was like i'm happy to see the adventure of these two girls going off and yeah. i was looking forward to that but then now it is four of them thrown in the mix i don't know well i mean it could still be fun but we'll see i'm glad that they've yeah. that some sort of stakes have been introduced as well because up to this point i didn't really feel like there was any stakes in yeah, what was true. going on we were like what's their actual like story that's happening here so at least something's happened now that they're uh they need to break away from their customs and so yeah we'll see um, and they need somebody to die i really do think they're just <laughs> cannon fodder you know the the other two i think the mother i would say whatever her name is the stepmother maybe she will die or or i feel or like that and i i'm just yeah because you bring that up i just feel like her character we've seen the least of like even um what's his name i've already mentioned it before largo like largo seemed like mm -hmm. a bigger character so if anyone was to die at yeah. the start of season two it would definitely be Mar mary gold i would imagine yeah from the harfoots yeah is that yeah. even her Kill name? We should probably check that up. Yeah, we don't know. know. <laughs> I want to do a quick Google. I'll do a quick check here. <laughs> um, but anyways, that kind of wraps up the whole story of the Harfoots in episode seven. Um, so Helen, I'll get on to you for the next one because we're going right over to Casa Doom and we're getting to see some elves, which I know that you love. And well, we get to see Elrond. Elrond pleads King Durin for Mithril to save his people. And there is a mention of how he has learned some stone tongue, which I thought was quite cool. And I yeah. assume that is Ku's duel. I don't know if there are any other dwarven languages. And then the, the king wishes to speak with his son in private. So what did you, did you enjoy this scene? Seeing Elrond and Durin again and him pleading for the Mithril? Yeah. Um, well, I hated one part that was with a leaf in the Mithril. I was like, okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, mm. But but that comes later on. But, you know, and me as a, I don't really particularly like dwarves, but, you know, it's also yeah. a thing that Matt and I <laughs> am going on. The but, show here. Yeah. Welcome, Fair King. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yes, Will as well. But um, also Matt uh, from Not of the Rings. No, just kidding. But um, I think that actor who plays during the third, that? Yeah. Yeah. What's his name? I don't his know his Peter, name. Peter. Peter. What? Anyway, he. Oh my God! The voice. The the way. He, I mean, he Incredible. has a minor role, but he he is a Durin. I love it. He's so good. And the. He's amazing. Yeah, and and the whole. I do. So I do predict we will see a kind of war. Um, 
elves versus dwarves and who set all that up sauron anatar whoever he is or will be revealed as i really do think this is the beginning i think there'll be a some kind of war mistrust it starts with mistrust um but i i think we'll see a war coming because we he realizes now we, he saw the leave right he is still sealing the mind right he didn't change his mm. mind he said you know there are bigger i love that when he said there are bigger um powers at work here we shouldn't interfere with that because apparently this is the plan for the elves they have to die <laughs> Yeah. um you know the the gods want them to die we shouldn't interfere with the gods and um i really like that thinking of of him and i do think this is what what he has in mind this is why he you know keeps saying no to, to even his son and you know uh, the El elrond pleading basically um to to aid them and to help them he even saw you know um well he wasn't lying it it's not just because they want me thrilled to i don't know to make pretty necklaces um he he saw it's true um he still sealed the mine right so i do think there is a conflict brewing and i do think this is war coming in season two yeah yeah i definitely think so i think i think the dialogue between the two dorans was really really strong here and yeah. uh, i love how he speaks of how Aule created them with both fire and rock and he kind of yeah. said that the, the rock gives them the the want to stand the test of time but the fire yeah. represents the i suppose the notion that nothing can last forever um so yeah this means that he's not giving his son the blessing um johnny what are your thoughts in, in general about the the two durans arguing here it seemed like th the dialogue was so strong you you go for the prince and you're like yeah i understand what he's saying and then the king speaks and you're like oh yeah but i understand what he's saying yeah. mm -hmm. who do yeah, you just, back ju just before i go on with that uh the, yeah the actor's name for duran the third is peter mullen and peter he mullen. has been he has been incredible, incredible. um is, uh, i mean he just encompasses and embodies a dwarf and a dwarven king and yes. i mean during the fourth the prince Duran, uh, i'm sure he'll become a mighty king as well but for the moment he just he like you know he doesn't have that uh i don't know regalness that his father is yeah. uh just you know that's what he is he does he's not like acting like a king he just is the king so i think he's so yeah. cool i really i really like him so far so i wanted to give him a shout out also yes uh, marigold is the name of nori's stepmother so <laughs> i think we were right with that so that's Woo. good um so now we've got that out of the way go back to your question which was um <laughs> i really i really enjoy i agree with you dave i think that it was really strong this scene between um the durans having their conversation i like duran the third how anytime somebody asks him a question or anytime his son asks him a question he answers with it is it is said that the and he goes off this big long story that you're like yeah. what's he on about here now and then eventually he brings it back around and you're like oh i get it now and then there was this just sudden realization that he kind of goes and so some things are naturally meant to wither or something like that you're kind of going oh my god he's just gonna let the elves die and then, yeah. so that was really cool and again i think overall i would have to say that i would agree with Duran the fourth prince Duran. i think that maybe he's got the better argument but i completely understand where king Duran's coming from as well so yeah. i mean that's that's i think for me that's good story channel where you can understand both sides of the argument so i thought it was yeah. really i thought that was really cool and also i enjoyed the scene before that where elrond spoke the stone tongue as they said the kuzdul and he says like um how can I try uh, Doran says how can I trust an elf and he says you shouldn't but I am Elrond half elven and you can yeah. trust me and I was like oh he's saying his full title of his name I was like oh that's kind of cool so it was nice to hear that as well and Elrond he, Perudel yeah Perudel but he, yeah he, he and he pleads and he kneels down in front of the king so I just yeah. I think I love Elrond I think his he's just doing a fantastic job um Robert is doing a really really fantastic job in that character so um yeah 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 that's, that's good stuff what i have to say about that <laughs> but it's you know it's cool in a way that they both portray different character traits of dwarves the father portrays the let's shut ourselves off mm. let's not interact with the world what do i care of the fate of the world you know we we keep mining we keep doing our stuff here um war is not coming to our doors um and and 
during the fourth, his son is in a way, I wouldn't call it more far-sighted, but he's more open. This is the, the different, you know, because the dwarves were, even in the first age, right? Um, there, there were a lot of dwarves working with the elves, um, creating, crafting things together. And um, yeah, we're not so closed off. And we learn, especially at the end of the third age, Tolkien literally says they, they close, you know, they close their doors, they shut their doors, they, they don't want to have, they, they don't want anything to do with, with the, with the fate of the world anymore at the end, which is in a way sad, um, because they yeah. will be forgotten, right? Um, and you see these two concepts, um, in these two, um, in father and son. And I really like that. Yeah, no, I, I love the way their relationship is playing out. And I'm so glad that we're finally getting to see more of King Durin because we only got yeah. glimpses in, in earlier episodes, but then we get to see Disa for the first time in this episode and hashtag she's... Sauron. What is that? <laughs> like, what, seriously? like clamming, like banging away at the, is that what you mean? No. No, but her eyes and everything, like, and she's in a way talking him into this. Was she she's always got those Anakin was... Skywalker eyes? Yeah, <laughs> and but but the thing is, you know, she was the one. If you remember, pet theory here. Um, pet, pet is it called? Sorry, baby brain. But um, <laughs> whatever. Tinfoil, tinfoil theory. Tinfoil. Um, right. So tinfoil she sang to the stone, right? Mm -hmm. Right. She, yeah. This is, yeah. So she was the one discovering me thrill, right? In a way, or she said, Let, let's dig here. There is a, I don't know how it yeah, really she works. Was resonating with the mountain. Um, Sauron? <laughs> I mean, no, <laughs> I mean, is it, no, is she Sauron, but she is very persistent and she, you, you know, I mean, you know, these kind of ambitious wives, right? Who then tell their husband, oh, don't listen to your father. One day you'll inherit and then we do whatever we want to do. But I don't know. I just got a real bad vibe from her all of a sudden. Like she's still nice and all that, but then these eyes flaring up. And then mm -hmm. if you think she was always very... Um, pro let's dig let's keep digging let's do she start apparently started this so it, i don't know was she influenced by Saura? I... she's given a lot of lady macbeth vibes i suppose she does you're, you're bringing does. it up now but but the best uh, realization from this episode is the fact that doran calls out that disa's mother had lice in her beard which i thought yeah, was hilarious yeah. <laughs> um, and, and then he said she... just kidding just kidding yeah he's like oh no no no, no. i didn't he didn't actually say the word beard as well but uh, she insults Duran's father uh, for the stubbornness, <coughs> but then she ends up <clears throat> repenting. Uh, then we get the absolute tear-jerking moment of Elrond and Duran saying goodbye. But Elrond says, this isn't goodbye, but... And then they both say it in tandem, Namarie, which I, I always thought was translated to just well met. But Elrond says that it means go towards goodness which which is a really yeah. nice touch it was it was such an amazing and powerful scene and again i have to yeah. bring up the music in this scene was so good i think it's the elrond theme i'm not sure was it elrond or just like the friendship theme and i used to play clarinet but i i think we can hear an oboe being played here or maybe it's a clarinet i don't know but it's it's so mm -hmm. fitting and it's so touching but uh johnny i want to go over to you to see how did you get on with the scene did you was it making you cry <laughs> Um, beautiful. Yeah. Really beautiful scene. Again, the, I think pretty much every time in this series so far, yeah, uh, now seven episodes in every time I've kind of had a real emotional feel in this, uh, in, in the series, it's pretty much always been between, uh, Elrond and Duran. I felt a little bit emotional when I was watching that song, the, 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 the wandering song with the Harfoots. No, I didn't like <laughs> tear up or anything, but I was like, oh, this is really sweet and it's really nice. But the only times I've really felt that kind of like, you know, uh, tug on the heartstrings has been between these two. Um, I thought this one, um, maybe not so much as, especially when, uh, when Elrond told the story about his father, that was one that I was really like. I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm an emotional wreck. Uh, <laughs> so, but this one, it was just not maybe to the same level, but it was definitely really beautiful. And I think their dialogues are always really well written. They're really well delivered. Mm -hmm. And um, as you said, the music as well was, uh, you know, it just, it's been adding to everything this series so far. So 
Um, we're yeah. always praising Bear, Bear Mercury. And by the way, also, I if if anybody is out there and uses Amazon Music, I never I, I use Spotify, so I never use Amazon Music. But this week I went on because I heard Bear Mercury saying that he posts up or not that he does this himself, but that after each episode they release the entire full episode yeah. score on Amazon Music, and yeah. it mm-hmm. will be available on Apple and Spotify in the future. But for the moment. It's just on Amazon, it's so you can listen to the individual music from each episode, which is different to the the kind of greatest hits score. catalog that he <laughs> that he, he described to us before. So um, I recommend anyone to go and put that on in the background when you're doing some chores around the house because it's, it's really really cool as well. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, but fantastic scene, really emotional. Um, I liked how Duran then, like, you know, put the meat on the table, like, slid it across the table. It reminded me of that game that you play when you try and knock a coin <laughs> to the other side of the table. The drinking like, game. Just, just hanging up yeah it could be a drinking game if you wanted to anything's a drinking Um, game if you wanted but i thought that was really cool now again that led immediately to the scene where the mithril does heal that leaf Mm. and i don't know i was really shocked i didn't expect that to happen at all i was like wait a minute yeah that must mean that this whole bollocks is true and i'm like that's uh, no i was like i'm 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 in denial right now i don't know how i feel about that yeah so because know. we all thought this is a trickery of Sauron, right? So who, sure. twist, so sure yeah. who twisted an old story he probably knew or came across. Um, so so the elves did, in a way, trust whatever he mm. was whispering in Kilibrimbo's ear. And then I was like, I, don't, I mean, I hope they will yeah. explain it, but... Anyone who said to me that, like, oh, well, I, I don't like that story, I've been re- reassuring everyone, but like, don't worry, that story yeah. is bullshit it's, like it's not that's not going to be that's not going to be we're going to yeah. find out later that that was a made-up story by Sauron. that's just what i was like it has to be like there couldn't be any other way but it looks like now it does actually cure this crazy unless again sauron is like gone another even level deeper and the weird spell that he's put on this tree i was going to suggest that gonna, yeah maybe i mean whatever he's done way too much i think well he could have done this sort of spell that like it the tree is supposed to represent the elves, I suppose. Um, but maybe he's put some sort of spell on the leaves that they will be cured by Mithril. I don't know how he's done that, mm. but that's still a bit annoying. But one thing I was thinking about, I'd love to be a fly on the wall in the showrunner's room when, you know, after last, was it two weeks ago when the episode came out, when everyone was like, oh my God, With the this, tri- this the the whole song of the roots of the Hithyglir. Yeah. Like everyone was in uproar and then they were like, oh, actually, you know what? This is probably Sauron. And then the showrunners are probably just like, oh, oh no, God, we is... really should have made this Sauron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can we like, that would have been a great idea. Of... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That would have been a good Because idea. if you think of later, right? Like Frodo is wearing the Mithril uh, sh- shirt and stuff like that. Hmm. So Mithril is mind even later on. Is it then... The only explanation would be he did something to the tree, right? The tree itself. So yeah. it's not Mithril. It's just the interaction of that specific tree and Mithril. Because otherwise, yeah. wherever Frodo walks, I don't know, flowers would string because yeah. because Mithril is... A, we, a we, par- know like, that, we know that Sauron, um, he like lusted after Mithril, or, like, so to speak. So he did, he was... Yeah. He really wanted, and, and Tolkien never explains why. He just kind of says he he you know he envy or he wanted Mithril for whatever reason. Um, so maybe he has like a small little batch of Mithril, and he's managed to come up with some sort of concoction that's like yeah. this is the anti Mithril that I'm going to make a sickness and put into this tree, and then Mithril can actually. I don't know it's way just way too convoluted for me now, and now yeah. I'm just starting to think maybe it is just that this story is true. And in that case, yeah, like you said, what Frodo just wearing a Mithril coat years later, surely all of the elves that he's around, Legolas would just be like, give me that cloak and let me wear it and, you know, just cover <laughs> yeah. myself in light. You know, just, I don't know. Let just, me lick just... it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so... No. Um, so that was, <clears throat> that was a, a bit of a worrying scene for all of us. And yeah. But actually, one of the good things about that scene is that uh, when he throws, when you know, when we see the leaf being cured, it le- it leads to that uh, close up of Durin just like staring over back at at, at D said, "There's good Elrond," and I was like, "Oh, that's that was so funny!" It's just like he's calling out for a long lost lover or something. That was yeah, like, uh, yeah. Well, they do uh, feel like long lost lovers in in this episode and all the previous yeah. episode. Oh, but yeah. Um, yeah, that, that made me to... that was that was a more of a scene that kind of really touched my heart more even so than 
for the the Namari is he when he kind of like goes we can save him and it is true and it does work and he's yeah. like oh right yeah. I was like oh that's, well that was all I really enjoyed in that. the one scene and yeah I just it was no like it I was, was yeah blubbering a little bit throughout the whole mm. thing. But uh, yeah, then Durin calls out for Elrond and they go mining in secret and there's some more fun dialogue between the two whilst Elrond tells Durin that he basically threw their stone breaking contest. And <laughs> that was just, so cool. Yeah, yeah. He just felt a little bit winded and that yeah. kind of reminded me of Legolas drinking. a slight tingle in yeah, the fingers. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dig. And then Gimli like, well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was brilliant. So, um, and I like the way they kind of say, "Yes, German and Irish can identify with that." You know, <laughs> exactly. like, bring, bring on the others. They are like she. Helen, with. when are we having yeah. a drinking competition? Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, whenever this baby in in a week, <laughs> in a week, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> well, Helen will be like, days. I can feel a slight <laughs> tingle in my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I really After like how like they nine they, nine mass at Oktoberfest. Oh yeah, right, just perfectly in time for Oktoberfest. So this was we cool didn't mention that to our the, listeners that we should need to give an extra thank you to Helen for coming on because she's uh, due to give birth in about a week's time. So um, <laughs> even more props to 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 you, Helen. I thank you again so much for coming on. Very committed to to this uh, cause. To the you cause. Know. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, exactly. So all of our listeners, you should appreciate uh, our guest even more. So go check her out. Give her some likes. <laughs> go subscribe to her channel. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we, we I, I, re I really liked how Durin says to Elrond that he's very dwarf like for an elf. And then vice versa. Elrond says the same to Durin and they share a, a little bit of a smile. Whoever's writing those scenes, by the way, like kudos to you because you're mm. doing an incredible job but then they actually discover the mithril uh, and it is in this root form again just yeah. like the the song of the roots and mm. that again kind of made me feel like oh no this is confirming all those stories but then yeah we get to see the the king finds them and banishes elrond so uh helen yeah what did you make of of this the actual discovery of the mithril and everything well i believe i I believed obviously there is Mithra in the mountain. Um, it was weird, as you mm. said, you know, that it confirmed the song of Fithaigle. Um, because how would they know, right? It's like the elf was there fighting the Balrog. Who was it? Was it Sauron or Morgoth? A Balrog. That was Balrog. Oh, a Balrog. It was a Balrog, sorry. Yeah. Uh, baby mm. brain. Um, a Balrog. And and then how do do they know that it went in like roots into the mountain and then it, mm. it was actually true? Anyway, let's okay, let's ignore that. Um I I mean, I, again, this 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 just points at at this whole thing dwarfs against. So, so for me, this set up the, the whole thing because you 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 saw okay. So the elves were right all along, even without the leaf. Now they discovered this, um, and he's still not aiding them, the king. So I I like that because I want elves <laughs> and dwarves to fight uh, and to go. Uh, to war, I didn't get that in the the battle of the five armies. So give me, give it to me now, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> give it to me raw. <laughs> oh God! Give it to no. me and give it to me raw, <laughs> as Duran says. Um, enough of the yeah, quail sauce. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Enough of the quail sauce. Uh, again, we see uh, Dur Prince Duran going to King Duran, and they have again great dialogue. Yeah. And another really well written scene. And the prince states that Elrond is as if he were flamed in the belly of his mother, basically saying that he is like my brother, he's like my kin. And then the king takes huge offense to this, to slander uh, his yeah. wife's memory. So uh, again, it's such an interesting argument they have. They exchange heated um, talk, I suppose, uh, and which leads to the king. I don't know, is this what he does? Does he de-air his son? Does he de air? Yeah, yeah, because if when he like when that. he rips he the thing, he pulls that off. And does it seem like there's another brother in this situation? That's what Deesa says later on. Yeah, yeah. she says you're going to be the king, not your brother. Yeah, um, exactly. You. So Johnny, yeah, who are you backing in this fight? Uh, during the fourth, during the third. I know we already kind of touched on it already, but like, did you like how the scene played out? Um, oh, well, again, I agree that I think that it was really dialogue wise. I think that these are the stronger ones. I think during the third, I pretty much love every time he's speaking. I'm just 
like fixated on what he's saying and i'm pretty much just like what like watching what he says and they'll just like click rewind 10 seconds and just rewatch it again because mm-hmm. i think he's just so cool he's one of my favorite characters in the series even though he's got a minor part so i think he's really cool now i will say that i think they're just a little bit overusing this whole thing of like uh, their relationship like um, during the third does something against his father then goes to his father they have this big they get mad at each other and then there's yeah. a scene of Durin with Deesa talking complaining about his father and then eventually he's like right I'll have to go and say sorry like I mean that's already happened like three times in these yeah. seven episodes so I'm kind of going yeah. I mean I'm, I've enjoyed every time I think it's really good but I'm just thinking we're still back right now where we were in episode two where he had this big argument with his his father was it episode two i can't remember which one it was but it's like that's yeah. his, his relationship hasn't moved on in any way since then and it's like you know the last time that his father spoke to him and he came and he apologized and his father was saying like you know um uh, i'm with you always my son um yeah e- e- even in anger and he's like especially in anger sometimes and i i was like that was a really beautiful scene that was a really emotional scene i loved it and i was just thinking they've just gone back to that exact same position now again and so it's kind of like I, again as i said i really enjoyed it but i'm just wondering was it necessary to just have this same kind of um, yeah. arc I, th- I think they needed to have to show the audience the tense relationship show, that they have that they, maybe to show their, const- their relationship yeah they're constantly maybe. butting heads and this scene seemed more final than all the others this was him actually like taking off whatever that sigil thing was on duran's neck mm. and he's he's saying like don't bother picking it up. It doesn't belong to you anymore. And it did really feel like he was disowning it, his, his It son. was a bigger deal this time, for sure. Yeah. It was definitely yeah. a, a more yeah. important uh, argument that they'd had. So, yeah. But again, as and I you... said, I, I don't want to sound negative because I, I loved the scene. I'm just curious yeah. as to if that was a, the right decision to have this story as well. Like, I think they could have, like, uh, put all of those stories together of have a big argument between his the father and son and then for them to kind of mend that relationship again but maybe they're not going to mend it maybe this is going to end with maybe the balrog might just break through kill his father and he knows the last time he spoke oh, to his no. father is like they had this big fight and that could be a you know a big thing to develop um during the fourth character as well so i don't know that's what might happen i think that the third never the father never wanted actually to aid the elves but he always wanted his son to see on his own the elves are not worth it you know the they they try to trick you i think this is actually why he did allow him to go to Celebrimbo and to talk to gilgalad and all that i think he wanted durin to find out himself mm, you can't trust the elves i literally think he wanted to teach him to be a good dwarven mm-hmm. king and to stand with his people and not with elrond and i think at this point um and this is why in a way you know he sent him there and you know Durin always was a bit disappointed when he came back and he was disappointed in elrond i think um during the third really liked uh when when his son was at that stage Um, But he didn't want to tell him. This is very, you know, how fathers or how families, you know, are. Like, they they don't want just to tell you, do this. They want you to find out yourself, right? Uh, For for yourself. And and I really like that. And I think that was his thinking. But then he saw, you know what? Nothing can change my son's mind. Now he even says they are like, he feels they are like brothers. Um, This is the moment where I'm taking away his right to rule after me. I think he gave mm. up on his son in this moment. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I feel like that is the case. There is going to be a separation between the, the father and son here. And we do see the yeah. last scene of them is where Disa is trying to reassure Prince Durin that one day they will both rule and they will mind the mithril but all that said and all that said and done we have the final part of this storyline which is the reveal of the balrog and it is not a flashback it is probably durin's bane that is awakening yeah in Definitely. the actual yeah. mind so johnny thoughts on the balrog will we see him i mean is he going to be a, char- a big character or is he just like a little cameo do you think we'll see i him hope he just I, I i hope he just like wakes up sneezes and then turns over and goes back to sleep or something like that. that's that's what i kind of hope happens i'm i'm going to imagine that the end of the next episode the, the episode ends with the balra coming in destroying moria and killing Durin the third that's oh, what i think no. that's going to be my prediction for what's going to happen um 
I don't want that to happen because I think that, I mean, it, it wouldn't make later. sense. It, well, it happens yeah. later, but it's not just, I, and again, I know that some stuff has been shifted, shifted around and <clears throat> the compression of the timeline, all that kind of stuff. But I mean, it wouldn't make sense for Moria to be destroyed yet, considering that they've, they're only no. just discovering Mithril and the strength and the wealth of Moria was in Mithril. That was where, yeah. that's how they, so we haven't even seen Moria, like, I mean, or Kazuduma, I should call it now. We haven't even seen it at its peak. It's, it's only just exactly. starting to, like, as in what Gil Gallad says, we know that, it just in the last 20 years it yeah. started to really kind of get like developed and yeah. we know that it's only going to go from strength to strength from here apparently so my hope would be that the balrog we're just we, we're just being let know that he is down there he is maybe coming to the end of his slumber maybe as you know he's just hitting the snooze button for another like ah oh, i'll give it another 150 years or something and then we'll see and then maybe i'll make my appearance but um yeah, I, I don't know. That's what I would hope, but I could see how they might want to have a season one finish with a big bang like that. Um, but again, I really hope that that's not going to be the case. Well, they they have enough things to cover, I think, in the finale to keep us. There's so much to like cover. The whole so Sauron yeah. storyline, and even the, I don't know if we're going to get much on the stranger, but sure. Look, we'll we'll talk about that again at a later date. I do think though the showrunners promised us that we are going to see Casa Doom in its heyday, in its proper glory. And yes, this is way too early for the Balrog to wake up, but I think we we haven't gotten enough of Casa Doom. Everything we've gotten mm. has been amazing and it's been great, but I want to have as many scenes in Casa Doom as we've had in the Southlands. And I think that yeah. the whole Southlands journey is kind of coming to a close and that's turning into Mordor and all that. Now I think there's room for you know more scenes in season two in Lindon, in Eregion, in Casa Doom. Yeah. So I mm. don't want the Balrog to be any part of the next season at all. No. Yeah, I do think it was more symbolic um, because Evo is where you know Mount Doom just erupted, right? I think this is more symbolic. Evo is at work now. Um, it does it mean is rising? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't mean yeah. they show up right. He shows up right away, but. It is aware my master or my new master is back somewhere. Um, time to wake up, um, but not time to act. I, th I think that's what they wanted to show. Because it's, I didn't get the, was the leaf, what, what, like the presence of elves somehow, or what, what woke him up? I think, I think he was just already awake anyways, and that was just you know, kind of a trick of okay. the camera just to show how close he is to the surface. Okay. Or, or so you don't think it, the it smelled the nah. elven leaf tree? I don't think no, so. I, I, I think I, that the yeah, leaf I, just I, burned I, up to show it was close to the Balrog who was already okay. awakening from okay. his slumber. And I, I, think you're, you're, I think you're right, Dave, that we could, uh, us as viewers, we can see where he is, his location is in relation to, like, it's mm. it's not like, oh, there's a trick of the camera that they cut away and he's he's in a completely different mountain. He's in that mountain no, because we got to, we get to, to follow the, the, the track of that leave as it falls. So it's, it makes it very clear that that's exactly where he is. And it's not like a little um, cut away to some other random Balrog that's in some other place in, in, in Middle yeah. Earth. So, um, yeah. But I, yeah, I, I don't think that it's got anything to do with the presence of elves or anything like that. Or, uh, but no. you never know. Everything's up in the air at the moment. I've, yeah, I felt like I knew some things that were happening in the show and it turns out I have no idea what's going on at all. So. No, we'll but it's that cool like that strategically the baddies have their chess pieces everywhere, right? They have the Balrog in 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 Moria, close to close to Linden, close to the elves. So Anata probably running around somewhere in in Linden um, or in Eregion. Um, so you know, so so he has his chess he, now. Uh, the Southlands become a uh, Mordor, so he has his little chess pieces because Sauron is a chess player, right? He's always mm -hmm. two steps ahead of the others. Um, so I really, yeah, I, I like that idea. Yeah, he has his minions we, everywhere. That's a good point, but I think also we should realize that we shouldn't consider the Balrog to be just a pawn of Sauron's either. He's He is a Maya and he could be be on board with Sauron's plan but we don't really have any confirmation that they ever really I think Sauron could have called the Balrog to come and and like you know be under his command but I think Sauron was happy to just let him stay there in Moria and rule Moria yeah um but I, yeah so I don't think he's just like some random pawn of Sauron's as well he kind of is almost 
he's not a, a threat to Sauron, but you know, he's definitely not just like one of his people that he can tell what to do and, you know, oh you just go and do this and do that. The the Balrog will make up his his own mind as well. And Oh, you think so? Because I think so. with Morgod it was mm. different, right? He yeah. if you remember when he when he called for the Balrogs, when he sure. made this pussy cry. Um <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, yeah, yeah. Without... no, I, I, yeah, you're completely right. But I just definitely think that the Sauron relationship between not... Mor Morgoth okay. and the Balrogs is completely different to Sauron and the Balrogs because yeah. at, that's, at that point, yeah. Morgoth was the was the commander, Sauron yeah. was the lieutenant, and the Balrogs yeah. were there just and they were like, oh, so you're just going to be the new boss without consulting us? Is that what's going on? Or again, we, you know, we don't really know, but. Uh, it we also wouldn't be that. the biggest change that the showrunners would no. would make if they just said that, yeah, all evil answers to Sauron. I, I would not be sure. surprised if they went for that. But anyways, that wraps up the, the storyline there. And moving on to the Southlands, the, the very first scene of the entire episode, which actually maybe I, I was thinking about this. Why the hell is the episode called The Eye? I don't really well, know. But yeah, the very the, first the, scene is Gladiel's eye opening up and maybe that's uh, that, that's one note well to, i wrote down and three things for that yeah muriel, muriel has both yeah. her eyes yeah. shut and then yeah. i just said like obviously the eye when you think of lord of the rings you think of the eye of sauron and yeah. mordor has been that's why i was expecting more well, sauron so. but we didn't get any sauron stuff in this episode so uh, not really well no. depends who sauron well, is well, exactly <laughs> but i thought it, i thought if it's called like, do you remember that episode that was called adar that was all explaining about yes. who adar is <laughs> I thought at the end yeah. of this episode, we'd know everything going on with Sauron. But, but did you anyways, notice that in this episode, everyone had eyes? I did notice that. So almost everyone, yeah. You know, almost, well. So anyways, board. Galadriel wakes up in the ashes. And of course, we just see people trying to find, you know, bring out your dead. Uh, they're trying to find <laughs> the injured and the dead. And we also get that guy, is it Antamno? Antamonimo or something? That Antimo, guy, is it? Antimo. Okay, yeah. So he died, uh, and I wasn't surprised mm, at all by yeah, that. I thought no, he'd no. be one of the first to go. And we also get Galadriel calling out for Halbrand before Elendil, which I thought was kind of interesting. Johnny, what what did you make of the the opening scene from the whole episode? Was it cool? Yeah. Um. It, oh, it was. It was amazing. Uh, visually, it was an incredible and an awesome scene. The set was amazing. Uh, the feeling of the scale of destruction was immense. It was just death everywhere there was that flaming horse that just runs past her oh, which so was insane. Cool. i was like oh my god this is like that scene in game of thrones when Arya finds a horse but way better um mm -hmm. so fire. Just so there was also a and man then, on fire yeah, crawling Jeez. but it was like galadriel meets theo and she's like are you hurt he's like no and then they're like okay come with me and then the camera just pans across and there's a man on fire just burning to death, crawling yeah. and i was like <laughs> the, the, uh, she's like are you hurt my child he's like no i'm fine but i think that guy could do it like you know <laughs> yeah. could, should he's we start a bucket of water on him or anything or just a blanket or something it's like ah he's a goner you know don't worry about him <laughs> so uh that was kind of weird but again it, it was like maybe 10 meters away but i think the fog was so thick and the ash was so thick that maybe they couldn't even see him it was pretty pretty crazy but yeah it was a uh, Really cool scene. Chaos. I, I liked a lot. Yeah, yeah, it was chaos. And also, when you said that you imagined that uh, Antimo was going to die first, <laughs> that was pretty obvious when, he, as soon as he was talking to his fiance and he was like, Oh, I reckon yeah. the war will be over before we even arrive. It's like, Well, that means you're going to die pretty much. You're so, dead. Uh, yeah, so that was, um, yeah, that was kind of to be expected, I suppose. And it's good that. I want, I mean, I don't want to be cruel, but I want more people to die so the stakes get like, uh, are higher. Yeah. And like mm. none of the main characters really have died or like had loved ones die, so this is the first one that we've got. We've got to see a close friend of um, yeah. uh, of Isildur's die. So that's, yeah, well, it's good to see that kind of uh, increases stakes. It's good to see that, but also in the scene, something I paid no attention to until later was the fact that Isildur was supposed to be like it looked like he was supposed to be dead or like caught did under you not, a fallen. Did you not get that? No, no, I, I kind of saw it, but I, I just was like, okay, yeah, we'll see him in the next scene. But then they're playing it throughout the whole episode that Isildur mm. died, died. And I'm like, why why are they doing this? Like, we all know he's alive. Like, even yeah, yeah. normal fa like n normal watchers of the TV show, that they'll know that he's not dead. There's no way. So that's just one of those things that kind of annoyed me. I think it will give Elendil some motivation to do something yeah. mm -hmm. dodgy. Yeah. Or, I don't know. I think I think we're going to get an Aragorn and Brago scene of Beric coming in and saving Isildur. <gasps> and that's exactly yeah. what I think is going to happen. I, I reckon 
they oh. might have trained the horse to, to to kneel down beside him and and pick him up as well i think that's because that's They're what that's what do that yeah that's exactly what's going to happen but i mean and again can we just jump to that scene for a moment where they let uh beric go because he's they, they can't calm him down and he just sprints across these open plains with this huge backdrop of these like snowy mountains Beautiful. and it was and the music came in i was like this is stunning this is this is what i'm here for i'm here for these kind of shots of middle earth and that was incredible but we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment we'll talk about so, that but, um, but yeah it was it was supposed to show it because like i mean isildur he's holding like a burning log then muriel who's yeah. kind of supposed to be helping him she gets yeah. this ash in her eyes and she kind of like screams and falls back out the door and that's when she goes blind and then now nobody's helping Sildra and the whole building collapses and it looks like he should definitely be dead so i have no idea how he's going to survive that but we all know that he does survive it so that's a bit strange. Well, but i agree as yeah. well it's, com it's completely for the purpose of giving elendil and my god elendil in this episode i was like he's acting 11 out of 10 in this like uh he's turning it up to 11 his acting skills because uh he just had this like look of despair and uh like i don't know it was incredible i uh, on his face the whole time he must have like he must have a headache from all of this like kind of intense uh whatever he's doing like furrowing his brow the whole time because uh lloyd owen was class and i, I yeah, yeah he's amazing elendil he's, he's class on every episode elendil, yeah. elendil. Yeah. um oh. also we get uh galadriel splitting with theo for some reason I, I don't really know why like they all seem quite close together but then they go off on their own little journey yeah and Theo then admits to her that this is... Oh, no, sorry. Galadriel says that this is all her fault. And also, Mordor is looking really well. I'd like to um, shout that out. Also, this is where you first see Beric has actually survived because Elendil notices the scar on him. Mm. And he asks where his son is. He goes, where is my son? And this gave me real big Denethor vibes. But, um, yeah. Oh, um, I wasn't thinking about... Yeah. J just the way he goes, where is my son? I, I thought yeah. it even sounded well, my kind first of like born. Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then we also see Galadriel basically giving Theo great advice on how not to turn evil. And she also gives him the sword. She's kind of, you know, he's kind of saying, how, how do I stay away from the darkness? And she's like, well, you know, don't be don't such a... to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually true. But um, she, yeah. She, said, Helen... she says something cool though. She says, um, when he says, oh, have you killed many orcs? And she says, yeah. And he says, good. And then she says, yeah. don't say that. And she says, I wrote it down. She said, it darkens the heart to call dark deeds good. And I was like, that sounds like a song lyric or something. So it's like. Yeah, it, but, it's like so, but it's so weird that because it contradicts what she literally just said the episode before to Adar. It mm. contradicts. But I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know about that because I don't think she's saying that what she said to Adar was good Joyful. in her heart. Yeah, she, it's just something, it's like a, a necessary thing that has to be done. We need to exterminate these things. But she's saying... Yeah, the, but she said, let's bring them to it, the sun and roast them in the sun. No, of course. No, exactly. No, I mean, I completely don't agree with, with Galadriel's, uh, you know, war crimes. I think it's uh, completely against her character and it was pretty ridiculous. But... I do think that um, uh, I don't. Know, I just think that what she's saying to Theo in this moment is that it, it, you, I mean, you go to war, you go to battle, you kill, you wipe out all these orcs, but you don't rejoice about it. You don't say we did good. You just well, maybe I don't know. It, it's it is a bit confusing to see what Gladriel is actually talking about because she's kind of a bit contradictory just in her character, as you said, Dave. That she's trying to give Theo advice on um, how to be good, and she seems to be quite in a moment of uh not being quite good herself so it's a bit strange yeah yeah um and then that's followed up by the scene where muriel gives away that she has now become blinded and i thought for me this was this is one moment where i was watching this on my own but i actually kind of said to myself oh no muriel's blind it was kind of a bit of a tearjerker moment for me um like creepy dad foreshadowed this yeah, yeah exactly yeah, find, what, what does he say darkness. he says he said, "You uh, only darkness, darkness awaits, awaits you. you in Middle Earth," and I think yeah. everyone kind of yeah. thought that just meant, you know, well, well doom eventually, or you know, even the smoke yeah. of the of Mount Doom or something or like death. that. But or death, yeah. But the fact that it's actually blindness, and how ironic is it that Very it's cool. the daughter of Tara Palantir, who is, which means far sighted, she is yeah. now completely blind. So does that just kind of show the polar opposites between the? the father and the daughter i don't know but um yeah um mm. it was a it was a sad scene to say the least yeah, yeah because in yeah. the books you don't know is she you know in in the story talking wrote you don't know was she at the end 
a a complacent is is she working with at Farazon or not? You you don't know. She dies right um, in Numenor. Um, hashtag spoiler. Mm-hmm. Um, but you don't know from what Tolkien gave us about her. You don't know is she good or is she bad? Um, and I do feel with her. I don't know if you if you catched it. She said um, a bit later. She uh, talked about her father. And she mentioned his Andunyak name. And yeah. that means, that means because he, before he was Tarpalantir, which is the Quenya name. And we know the good kings used the Quenya title, right? Mm-hmm. Um, to show they still stand with, with the elves, you know, with their heritage mm-hmm. of um, where, where they came from. Um, and um, the, baddie kings then later on started using um the because they forbade the quenya tongue as well but they started using the um the anduniak name and this is the first time we ha- hear her uh refer to her father with the anduniak title so i do think she goes evil but mm. that mm. means is she working then with that Farazon? Because I thought these two were set up against each. I don't know, but it was a weird moment. It is weird as well, because at, at the end of the episode, she seems to be very close to Galadriel and she does promise that, you know, Numenor will return. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll get onto that in, in a while. In. But the next the next scene we see of Galadriel is where she tells Theo that, yes, she did have a husband. And, and Johnny, we talked about, we touched on this earlier. Celeborn, who never returned from battle. And I hope to God, and I truly oh, believe must that be they, out there. Yeah, they haven't killed yeah, him yeah, off yeah. because no. she would have also mentioned that she has a daughter as well. So, you know, there was no mention yeah. of that. And I assume they're not going to cut that. No. You know, cut that cannon and they also can't. stop the, get the cannon with um, Elrond and Celebrian. So yeah, he yeah. there there is going to be a really nice um, reunition reunition <laughs> between the two <laughs> characters. They're going to be reunited at some point, and I can't wait for that because it's just been kind of ignored this whole time. And I was so glad yeah. that they actually name dropped him. Mm, um, yeah, that was yeah, like I, that really made me sit up in my seat. I was like, oh my god, they've yeah. said Kelleborn. This is crazy. Big time. I'm waiting for your guys' memes. I mean, they need <laughs> oh, to be epic. Please. They'll be coming. They'll be coming. <laughs> They'll be coming. Sure uh, also in the scene Theo admits how he is responsible for Mordor and I thought it was cool when the orcs appear and they say what is it what do you smell and it's the yeah, exact same line from flesh. the two towers yeah I was just yeah. hoping someone would say man flesh but yeah uh, and another interesting thing to note in this very scene is Theo says what light when Galadriel says we'll leave at first light and I was yeah. thinking like sure there is no light but then just the fact that Theo is the one that says what light is kind of it's almost damning for his character's future because he's also on the line of is he going to end up being good is he going to end up being bad and just you know he'll be a nice it, ghoul he'll end he'll up a nice ghoul, ghoul. A nice with ghoul. the things she's telling him a nice ghoul a nice ghoul um, <laughs> with the things she's telling him and trying you know to everybody tries to bring him back Arondir did um, his mom you know everybody tries to bring him back but he still has this pull towards the dark side he mentions it right with with a sword and everything mm-hmm. um mm. i think nazgul i hope he's not the witch king because i really want the witch king to be a king a former king i still want yeah. halbrand to be the witch king and yeah so what are your guys thoughts on the whole Celeborn thing so um johnny i'll um... shoot to you first yeah uh first of all just delighted alive. delighted that uh we realize that he is part of this world that yeah. you know all, all the memes that we had before of like you know um just like uh Amazon, like, that, that one of, like that, that one from two <laughs> no, and a half that wasn't two, the one for two and a half men is like i think i've forgotten something oh if you, well if you've got it you, it can't be that <laughs> yeah like, yeah yeah you're probably right and kettleboard just standing there like so that's a class one um and also actually something that really made me laugh was uh when Galadriel says, Oh, I had a husband, Kelleborn. And then she goes, She says, Kelleborn was his name. And I thought she said, Kelleborn, what's his name? Oh. <laughs> I was like, I was like, What? So I just like rewind and turn, turn on the subtitles. I was like, What's she on about? Like, she forgotten her husband's surname. Kelleborn, what's his name? Uh, I can't remember now. So I was like, Oh, that was awful funny. 
And then she tells about how the whole uh, met in a glade of flowers and stuff. And I thought that was a nice, pretty story. Reminded me nice. of kind of Baron and Luthien. And also, um, but yeah, I, I, I 100% believe that he, well, don't, don't believe me because I also 100% <laughs> believe that this whole uh, roots of the tree of the Hithaigli or whatever it's called, uh, I'm, I, I was sure that that was all made up as well. But I'm pretty sure I would imagine that Celeborn is she didn't say he died she just said that she never saw him again so he went off to yeah. battle never came back um just yeah. dilly dallying like you know whatever he's doing uh he's he needs to hurry up and get home so i think in season two they will be reunited as you said and um yeah i mean i think well i really hope so because i mean i think there's a really cool character there that we should be able to get to to know and to yeah. to enjoy and I'd love to get to see more of their relationship because in the in the film of the Fellowship of the Ring we don't get to see their relationship too much. It's just he he just kind of stands beside Galadriel, and I want to see wise Celeborn, who's supposed to be one of the wisest elves by by the end of the Third Age. So that's what, that's who I want to get to know. So um, I hope that's the case. One other mm -hmm. thing I would point out is that scene where they're hiding under that log and the orcs. I was you said. Yeah, it's. I mean, exactly. Yeah. Just, just like the scene of the of Frodo and the Hobbits hiding from the Nazgul as well. So there's lots of things. Last week's episode, I think, was a bit too much. Where every five minutes was like, oh, this is just like the scene from whatever. So there was so yeah. many of that last week. This week, there was maybe two or three parts like that. And again, I think that's a nice number yeah. where you kind of just kind of remind you of something subtly, like, oh, remember that movie that you love? Well, this one's kind of similar. And you're like, all right, cool. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Helen, any other further thoughts on the whole Celeborn thing or did Johnny sum it up well? Yeah, no, just one thing I, I hoped, I think, I mean, we got the confirmation now um, that Kirdan will be cast. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I do think this will follow now that she name dropped Celeborn. I do think we will get, I think he will show up in season two. It would be weird to mention him and then not show him because look, this will be two years in the I mean, they started filming, but this will be at least two years with post and everything, maybe mm, two yeah. and a half years, whatever. So you can't mention somebody and then not show him in the next season and then just show him in the season after that. That would mean see you in six years, dude, right? Um, mm. So I don't think that. Um, but um, yeah, I thought she would meet him later on and he would be one of the reasons her character will change to more the Galadriel we know in the third age we know from the OG movies we know from the Lord of the Ring books right like the well not the warrior Galadriel but she she changes her her um her focus and her powers and she becomes more of this mage and wizard um Galadriel right and I thought that part of her calming down is meeting him but now mm. she already met him. Well, do you think so, it's, it's I, weird that she's been so full of vengeance this whole time and it's always been about her brother Finrod? And I know he was basically killed by Sauron and Sauron's forces and, you know, he branded yeah. him in the series. So, like, she's always been out for revenge. But, like, yeah. she never had a motivation about... Or, you oh, know, she's oh, never even mentioned as well. Like, yeah. yeah, like, we, she, you know, she didn't see him die. She didn't see his body or anything. But, like... She should also have been saying, like, I have I know. nothing, my, my husband is gone. But I always just assumed they hadn't met yet. But that is interesting. Yeah. It's it's a weird mm. time to drop his name in. But yeah, yeah, maybe this could also explain why she's been so full of vengeance because she's just felt so alone and lost. So Maybe yeah. they cut out, maybe she did say that in the beginning and they cut it out to not confuse, you know, the newbies Perhaps. with... Too many names, too many characters. I don't know. I it, but I feel like you. I was like you could have mentioned that like six episodes prior. Um, because yes, you know your brother. I get that, but <laughs> you also love your husband, right? So mm, what, why yeah. is he not part mm. of this whole vengeance thing? Because it's not like he disappeared to look for Mithril or whatever. He <laughs> probably she must have thought he died. Where could he be? I'd, he could be captured. I think he's I yeah. think so. What what else? I think at that whatever battle was, we don't know the name. Yeah. Um where Finrod died. I think he died there too. Oh she thought Or yeah, she, thought he yeah. died. 
Yeah, he wasn't just um, mocked, and she didn't see him. And I it's don't impossible know. I don't to know. There, there's nowhere near enough information given by Galadriel. Just basically, he went to war. He didn't come home. Basically, my yeah. my dad went to buy milk one day, and I haven't seen him again. Yeah. So um, the next scene is we get the Numenor camp set up, which I really like to see. And we already talked about Beric being set free, which was really nice. Was um, and Elendil trying to calm him down. And Elendil, this is where he states that he wished that he had never taken the elf ab aboard. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. And we're going to see how he might change from being so faithful to maybe a little bit... Um, in annoyance with the elves but it's it's kind of strange like what did he expect he he was going to war his son was one of the soldiers like did he expect no one to yeah. die and everything to just be happy-go-lucky like this isn't Galadriel's fault he knew what he was signing up for yeah so did he though his... the Numenorians haven't been in a real war for centuries right he doesn't I mean yes he's a commander of armies blah blah blah, blah but they haven't experienced a real war and she always tried to warn him, actually. I think they were all very blinded, the Numenorians, and very, um, yeah. how, how, how would you, um, very uh, ar arrogant in a way. And they, they had no idea. They were literally playing war, you know, mm, but yeah. they never saw a war and they never Perhaps, had yeah. to fight in a war. Yeah. So yeah, you're you're suggesting that he just did not know what the real struggle of war would be, and no, he, I yeah. how? Think, John? Well, we also should realize that it's not just a war that claimed his son; it's the eruption of a volcano, which none nobody really saw coming. I don't know how we could it's put true. the blame on Galadriel for that, and I agree yeah. with you that if he has decided to travel across the sea and to take a war to uh, Mordor, um, he needs to accept some of the responsibility for that. Um, but again, I com I think it's completely understandable that you're a father, you lose your son, and then on the same day, you're go maybe yeah. it's not that he was blaming Galadriel, but he was saying yeah, okay. I should never have accepted her on because that was yeah. the that the was chain the, of the, events. The, the, that was the, the chain of though. events. Yeah, like it's yeah. kind of like yeah. anybody that has a big disaster kind of goes. If only I had been stopped yeah. by a red light, then maybe that wouldn't have led to whatever. It's just I don't think he's blaming Galadriel. I don't, well, yeah. but he does seem to be angry. But it's understandable. He's just he's in he's in despair. He's he's grieving for the loss of his son. It's true. And um, yeah. so I don't know. I, I I'm going to give Elendil a pass on this momentary lapse of judgment for for the moment. And again, I think it's going to be just the same as what I said at the beginning, where we saw Bronwyn and have a complete 180 shift and then go back on the right path again. We saw Nori do it as well. And now I think this is his moment where okay. he's going to yeah. be completely, I turn away from the elves. And then by next week, he's going to be like, oh, Sildur, you're alive. Actually, I like the elves again. And I think there's going to be a bit quick quick shift again. So I don't I don't imagine we're going to see an angry Elendil for, for a long time or anything. Well, at least I hope not. Yeah, we know I the outcome, you know, the Battle of the Last Alliance. He was one of the driving forces. He built the kingdom of Gondor and Arnor mm. with his sons. But that's going to be um, like season five, I assume. So I hope I we're not going to we're not yeah. going to be waiting that long. I'm, I'm assuming by the end of season one, it's going to be we're all happy families again, him and Isildur yeah. and, uh, you know, happy families up until um, all of the terrible things happen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we actually get in a glimpse into the camp and we get Theo and Bronwyn and Arondir reunite. And this must be like the, the second or third time they've kind of done a fake death with Bronwyn. So this has to be the last time. If she if she almost dies again, then she's gone because like there's And no how way. are they so clean? Do they have a shower there? I was, li I mean, you know, I'm not nitpicking, but I am. Um, but yeah. she literally, she looked like... Aronde, everybody looked super clean. So what, did they have a spa day mm. bec before the others uh, he, arrived? He's a beautiful elf. Of course, of he, course he has I spa mean, days. He is. Yeah. I just <laughs> found out, by the way, that he is that one guy from the Mandalorian. Yeah, the, from, the pink were, guy, the Twi'lek. The Twi'lek, yeah, the evil Twi'lek. I didn't know that. Do you know the know episode that? with Bill Burr? Oh, yeah, The one yeah, where yeah. they have to he's... break out of that place. He's, I heard he's the, this like, news evil ages guy. Yeah, yeah, I heard that news yeah. that this one, he was going to be in it, but I, I I didn't know who he was going to be playing. Oh, all right, that's so cool. So oh, I was yeah. like, how cool is that? You're the new Christopher mm. Lee. I mean, no, nobody yeah. is Christopher Lee. Uh, uh, but, you know, you were in Star Wars and in uh, whatever, Lord of the Rings. So mm -hmm. kind of cool. So cool. I, didn't, yeah. I didn't know that. That is cool. I did want to say about this scene of the of um, Theo Bronwyn and Aaron Deer reuniting that I actually again felt really moved during the scene. I was kind of 
I was almost, you know, I was a bit of, I gave Bronwyn a lot of stick in the last episode, especially, but in this one, I actually really felt in, I really felt for her when Theo was looking around and I was like, oh no, mm. don't let that corpse be Bronwyn. No, no, don't tell me that's the last we've actually seen of her. So I actually did feel a lot of like uh, compassion towards the, the three characters in the scene. And again, it was massively helped by the fantastic music. And I don't know, I felt really emotional and I was glad to see Bronwyn survive and the three of them reunite and Aaron Deere and Theo actually get to embrace each other. It was, it was nice. That was nice. I really yeah, I, I did enjoy that, 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 uh, like Theo actually going and hugging Aaron Deere after he'd been so standoffish for a long time. So that was really, that was really lovely as well. And I do, I do agree that I'm warming to these uh, characters. I think it took a little bit longer than I think it should have done. Yeah. Maybe to really start to get an emotional attachment to them. I don't understand how Bronwyn is standing. I, do, I just, it's yeah. unbelievable that I did she, think she might basically be nearly died. And then what's happened since she nearly died the day before a volcano has erupted and that's not <laughs> going to help the case. And then suddenly she's climbing mountains to go up and have a chat with the, with the, the queen who's just sitting there on a rock, like way up higher above the, the cat, the encampment. So, yeah, I mean, it's just, it just I, I just think it's really crazy how just miraculous her recovery has been. Because, Elvish I mean, medicine, yeah. man. Elvish I know, medicine. but just like she's, she like, Wait, it doesn't much, work on how brands. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh, did they, oh. he's a big faker he's a big faker yeah, yeah, yeah. big big yeah. faker um yeah. yeah so we see johnny you mentioned it we see galadriel bronwyn muriel and elendil all meet and this is where you can you can feel elendil's thoughts on galadriel and how they've shifted and he kind of now despises her and he wants to leave numenor sorry he wants to leave <laughs> to numenor and uh basically yeah he kind of cries a little bit when muriel oh. vows to return and i was like no my heart elendil yeah when when she said like when she said commander commander and i was like yeah oh he's run oh he's run away he's what's run going on away. And, and, then, and then it zooms out he's just there he's just turning the other way kind of going <laughs> you're like oh my god he just he can't he's so choked up he can't even it speak was, like this it was so theatrical was like, oh, as well it's it's like where he's looking away from the camera and then he just goes <laughs> yeah <laughs> blue steel moment there the blue steel yeah moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that yeah, I I loved it. I loved. I, as I said, I just I loved his performance in this episode and pretty much every episode he's been in. So uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that, and it did make me like really feel for him that he's here trying to make these big decisions. He's trying to be this strong commander, but he knows that his son, his eldest son, is like apparently according to him dead, and like that's all happening in the same day. It's it's, it's a lot of news to to take on board. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did, uh, did any of you think it was kind of funny as well when, uh, who was it? Was it Arandir? When, when basically the Numenorians are sailing off and Arandir is like, do you believe that she will return? And Gladys was like, mm. no. No. And she pauses for ages. And I was like, I know. Wait. She's like, I know. I know she will. I am sure yeah. of it. I was uh, like, oh, yeah. okay. Right, yeah, exactly. right, right. Um, I totally but, believe that she was like, nah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but one criticism about this right and I, I mean i'm a girl myself and now people will come after me but i didn't like this three strong women on that hill you know talking about the fate and how how things will will go on now and basically setting up in a way um humans numenorians and elves the battle of the last alliance fighting right mm -hmm. uh because there were no women at as as far as we know, you know, they were not the ones who cut a cut off Sauron's hand. That was the guy standing there, right? So I don't know. I wasn't, and I think this show has a lot of these moments. I don't. I don't mind, you know, like Miriel taking up the role and stuff. I, I, I'm fine with that. But that moment I found very cringe. I'm sorry. I didn't like it. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I, I didn't really get that in the context of the scene because I did feel like Galadriel's probably the most important person there. And then yes, Muriel would be also that. the highest ranking mm -hmm. one there. I did maybe kind of feel like, well, why is Bronwyn there? But she was just kind of, you know, holding hands with Aaron Deer, so... Uh, and maybe representing the Southlands since uh, Halbrand actually, couldn't, yeah. she could, does. seemed like, yeah. seemed she like does, he couldn't yeah. get out of bed and then suddenly he's like, oh, I'll just I'll hop on that horse and I'm fine. Um, yeah. But I was going to ask a question. Is Muriel huge? Is she like, you know, a strong Numenorean woman who's just way taller than all the rest? Because 
it was in last week's episode where she finally meets Bronwyn and she says, you know, I'd like to introduce you to Halbrand. And she's towering above her. And I was like, has she always, has that actress always been that big? Or is she like, you know, standing up on a platform to make her seem bigger? Because mm. I'm assuming what they're doing is going with the whole, the Numenorians are a bigger Tall. race than, than, than yeah. the, the, the men of Middle Earth. So that would make sense. But I was like, mm-hmm. oh, that actress is, maybe she's just like really, really tall. And I mean, that I hadn't noticed it when she was in, Numenor, so obviously they're all just she's average height for for a Numenor. The, the Galadriel one is really short, though. I mean, I'm five Galadriel, four and I'm Galadriel short, short yeah. and she's five two. I mean, you saw her, right? Yeah, yeah. at the premiere. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was so going to think... say that was a jarring scene at the very beginning where she's like helping Theo, who's supposed supposed to be like he's a fourteen year old kid, and he's yeah. like, yeah, he's like taller than her. And I was yeah. like, this is a little bit like if Tom Cruise can stand on a platform for every single one of his movies, why I, can't the elves yeah. or the Numenorians? I know it's a little bit yeah. difficult, but yeah. Just work with a camera angle. I, I was asking myself that quite often when, because she is one of the OG elves. She's born in Valinor, right? So that is something special. She should have about... stature. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Helen. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the, the the first time we get to see Halbrand mysteriously living in this episode. He just shows up and he's wounded and he's there, <laughs> and then we see him later riding off with Galadriel. But what do you think is going on? I I really thought this episode, being called the Eye, would answer all, a lot of mysteries that we have. At least end with some sort of clarity. But they're still saving that for the season finale. What do you think is going on with Halbrand and his character? I, I, I don't want him to be Sauron. I, do, I You know, the first mm. moment I thought he Sauron it was when he was sniffing at the um, smithy shops in Numenor. Oh, and I was like, sniffing. no, no. Um, and, uh, you know, there. So, and when he was whispering in Arfarazon's ear and all that, yeah. I was very much like, oh, damn it. Um, I. I, I don't want him to be Sauron. I have no idea. I'm 50-50. I still hope he'll be the Witch King. And I still hope Sauron will be revealed yeah. next if, Friday. I was going to ask you if, you, if if he's not Sauron, who do you think will be Sauron? Do you think it's someone we've no already one seen? We've or do you think seen... it's somebody we, no one we've seen? So you think no one he's we've just seen so in far. the region? Or... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no one we've okay. seen so far. And because we saw, I don't know, have you, I just had, I watched it for one, and it's so fast, the preview for the next episode. So we saw something explode, and that was er- Eregion, that was the tower in Eregion. I didn't see that. I didn't, even, had I, didn't watch I didn't watch it. it. No, I didn't watch it. Ah, okay. Trying to avoid so... spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Not spoilers, no, not spoilers, they're just, I, I think trailers are just basically spoilers nowadays, they just give way too much, much away, so I... Try yeah, so but just a tower okay. erupts, and I thought, okay. and it it is in Eregion. And how would would she take him to Eregion? I don't think so. I think she's taking him to Gilgalad, right? That is what I understood. Hmm. So I don't think he's Sauron, because I do think something happens in Ere. I think Sauron will reveal himself in Eregion, and not in Linden. And she's taking well, they, him to Linden. They could do, he could travel in the space of an episode. Yeah, like time no. compression isn't a big deal to this show at all. But uh, they've, been doing that, they've been doing that a lot in this show. They've they've yeah. made it seem like the, the traveling is Linden just to Castle no Doom. big deal. Like it's, oh, it's a half an hour down the road to, to go for a walk, to leave, yeah. l- to leave a region and go for a walk, like an afternoon. For a walk and show, without a horse. And show, the <laughs> show up at the door of, yeah. Like uh, when th- that scene yeah. where it, it's it showed on the map like the dot 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 from a region to Casadubi, like yeah, they're yeah. they're they're close on the map. It's still like maybe a hundred miles or something, and they're like Celebrimbor just there. It is it's still in that same robe that he's always wearing, just strolling along, kind of going, oh, I've very much wanted to see the draws. It seems like this is the beginning of their conversation, but they must have been traveling for like a couple of days or something. So um, uh, yeah, it's, that it's was... a bit weird. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Yeah, but um, yeah. So um, this episode ends with the first time we see Adar as well, the first and only time. And mm-hmm. basically we get Waldrig being his hype man saying, come on, come on, Adar. Uh, cheer, cheers for Adar, Adar, or whatever Adar, they're saying. Adar, yeah. Adar, and yeah. Uh, then they're like, what should we call this land, my lord? 
and I was glad he didn't actually say it, yeah, but the way yeah, so it I. ended was very cool. The location text change and just burning away Southlands and changing yeah. it to Mordor. I thought that was mm. that was nice. I was glad he didn't go, we shall call it Mordor. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But do you boys think, is he working because Adar, F.E. character, by the way, um, shout out to Joseph oh, yeah. Malway, or what are you, hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, all the old, all the new characters, Joseph, yeah. Um, all the new characters are really good, actually. Um, and um, do you boys think that he is working with Sauron or because he wanted to be king himself? Sauron never, we know that, well from the law but what is the law in this series so but Sauron never accepted some anyone proclaiming themselves king right he did he didn't like that mm. he wanted to be the ruler right so but but this is what Adar is saying is he and is it will there be an infight for for uh Mordor are they working together I don't understand yeah. I like well, it seems strange that we've already had in last week's episode a king of the Southlands. We know the Southlands is now Mordor. So Halbrand yeah. is officially the king of Mordor. Uh, Adar has now been named Lord of Mordor. Um, yeah. So He said he wants um, to be a god, though. Not he a did king, say he wants to be god. a god. Yeah. I think he will be like a god to his children because he's going to be creating this world for them to live in. So yeah. he will he will be like a god really. I don't think he actually imagines that he will become a god himself. But um I don't know to answer your question. I don't know at all what's the story there if he's actually working in conjunction with Sauron or I don't think if he's so. going to be trying to challenge Sauron in some I, way. I, I, I and think according so because... to him he said he claims that he's already killed Sauron. So that's um, yeah. but I mean yeah, that is also I weird. I he but, might be wrong. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Um, but no, but I really do think because he is so, you know, these are his children as he calls them. And he said, I, um, I had to, uh, I forgot the English word for opfan. I had to, um, give sacrifice. so many of my sacrifice so many of my children to sauron's cause you know whatever that devilry that witch mm. stuff he was he was witchcraft thingy so i i do think he's an antagonist to to sauron i don't think that's yeah. how i would yeah yeah i think so i think so yeah um like both myself and Johnny last night, we were on Robert Indy Geeks the discussion. We were on his live stream and we talked for three hours or no, two and a half hours. And a lot of that was about Thanks. our theories about who Sauron check that is, out. who Adar could be. So yeah, I don't, I really don't have the energy to like yeah. repeat all my theories again. If anyone wants to check out Robert's stream, go ahead and do that. Because mm, and also while, while we're at it, uh, if you guys have not seen Robert's interview with, Bear McCreary that's uh, uh, yeah. a phenomenal one so I would highly advise going to check that out because Bear McCreary I don't know does is he allowed to say a lot of the stuff that he said but he dropped some major <laughs> major did. bombs in that and I, yeah. I loved it I was all for awesome. it yeah, yeah. Um, in, in Deep Geek in case people don't know Robert in Deep Geek exactly yeah and he and down. Robert thinks Sauron is Halbrand which I'm like shut yeah, up I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I'm. I, I if if you tuned in last night to that live stream, you'll see that I'm firmly in the same camp as Robert. I I can't see any other possibility. I only just every time I see Halbrand, I'm like, there he is, there's Sauron, uh, there's our boy. Um, so I don't know, and yeah. nothing has changed my mind uh, too much. It's just been a, again. I'll just to repeat a couple of small things I said on the live stream, which was there's been one or two small things. The one the the one big one for me that maybe swayed me a little bit was the scene where Halbrand kind of decides to not go through with the plan initially and he leaves down his little pouch with his sigil. He leaves it on a table at one point <laughs> and he leaves and then he comes back and he grabs it. I think that's the only time I think that he did an action which wasn't for the benefit of another person that was in the room. That every time he has this kind of like heartfelt conversation, I think that was really, that looked genuine, but maybe he's just trying to trick Galadriel or something like that. Whereas in that moment, the only people that he could have tricked would have been us, the viewers. So... And again, yeah. maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe he is actually Sauron in his moment of doubt and in his moment of repentance. But which happened, we know. Which did yeah. happen, yeah. And yeah. again, we don't even know. We we don't know according to the books if that was true repentance or if it was just for fear of the Valar. 
but he he does have a moment of repentance that we know about so that could be representing that as well so mm-hmm. i don't know um yeah but uh, all the listeners and uh, youtube watchers out there i really want to know what you guys are thinking in terms of after episode seven who do you think is sauron is it halbrand is it adar is it who who knows just put the comments below and um or you know get in touch with us on twitter as well at melon underscore heads with two l's but uh yeah guys that's pretty much the end of the whole episode so do you have any any further thoughts about next episode or about this episode that we've watched any last comments helen would you like to well, I feel like that meme uh, with a guy, you know, with all the in front of that map. Um, oh, Charlie and, from It's Always Sunny. It's Always Sunny. Yeah. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. And um, I feel like that guy at this moment because there are so many <laughs> things that need to be revealed and connected. And I'm like, okay, I hope yeah. uh, most of it will be revealed yeah. because I do like guessing games, but not too, like. Uh, I don't want to be it guessing was... who Sauron is for another three years. Um, no. I really don't. No. Um, no. Because if they yeah. if they leave that for the end of season two, that would just be a right kick in the bowels. Yes. Yeah. But um, yeah, I really yeah, hope I... that they can fit all the answers that we want into next week's finale. And maybe, do you guys think that it should be an extra long episode? Because I feel like it could be, Hopefully. but I don't know, will they do this that? This one was really long. It was 109 minutes or something like that. One hour, and nine minutes. Yeah. So, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, 109 minutes will be a lot longer. So yeah. Um, Sorry. But um, no, but it was. I think. I think it's um, most of them are around one seven, one ten, like around yeah. there. So um, maybe it felt think, longer. Maybe it felt longer. Is that's mm-hmm. not really a good thing. But I would agree that I think that for next week's episode, I'm really worried about all the answers that I have and all the things that I think that they need to wrap up and not just like oh they'll wrap up some of them, but I think a lot of them are important that they do give us. Yeah. Um, flesh out answers before mm, the series yeah. comes to a close and yeah. i don't know if that's going to be a possibility i just in terms of the pacing of the series so far i think next week's episode needs to be like double time uh in yeah. order to get through all that stuff so hopefully we'll just get yeah. some rapid fire answers and we'll in, in terms of traveling from where they are like going all the way to linden maybe jumping back then to region if that happens and there's absolutely zero time between for that travel I can understand it as well because they just they need yeah. to get through we'll it and they need to get through yes. yeah. so, Please yeah. no um, no wide nature shots. We don't we go we get it. It's well, beautiful. Thank you. I'm yeah, really, like I, yeah, I, I like the <laughs> I have to say I really, really enjoyed this episode, even though the pacing was way slower. Like compared to last week's yeah. episode, that was like full on. But this was more heavy on the dialogue and, and to be honest, I don't know what was wrong with me this morning. I wasn't hung over or anything, but I just felt so emotional. Like so many scenes. The the Muriel being blinded scene. Every yeah. time Duran was talking to Duran, I was like blubbering up. And then of course, uh even Bronwyn being, you know, coming back or not dying. I was like, oh, thank God Bronwyn's alive. So um yeah. Um but we need to get all, Dave a softy t-shirt, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'll get one. Uh, but yeah, like, like what you guys said as well, I don't want this season to end on a giant cliffhanger, but I feel that it will because this show seems like the type to depend on mystery and cliffhangers yeah. to keep the intrigue. Yeah. So that's what yeah. they've been doing from episode to episode. But I, I, when, I when we really spoke like... earlier about Celeborn and like why would she not have just mentioned him in passing in earlier, the only mm. reason that we can think of is just so that they could save that name as a name drop for later on. There's, there's no other, True. there's no other yeah. reason. Like story wise, well, it well, well make Helen sense said earlier, just... like maybe they didn't want to confuse the audience as well with too many. Yeah, but again, that's that, that's, and... that's what I mean. That's that. Who's who's that for the benefit of? Is it for the benefit of the story or for the benefit of dropping that well, name true. later so that we can figure it out? Like I mean. Give us the yeah. benefit of the doubt that we'll be able to hold on to one more name, saying like, I'm really upset because my brother is dead and my husband didn't come home. If you forget the husband's mm-hmm. name, that's fine. But at least you remember, okay, there's a husband in the picture. And when she's there having her kind of mini flirt with Halbrand, you're kind of going, well, we know that she did get married once when elves marry. They're like swans. They made for life. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, well, th- it's well not... this is good. This is almost confirmation now that the show, it's been kind of teasing us maybe this romantic lead between the two characters. And now this is the show saying, no, she's already bound to another. And I'm happy well, I about mean, that. 
Yeah, I'm also assuming by the end of next week's episode, we get the reveal that Halbrand is Sauron. So, I mean, that should definitely nip it in the bud for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I'm so. just glad that they never had that. I'm sorry, Helen. <laughs> you know, that, I don't know, joining. But anyways, um, I think we can wrap it up there because we've been talking for quite a while. And Helen, I don't want mm. to keep you any longer. But thank mm. you so, so much for coming on. Thank um, you, Helen. With such short notice as well and uh look you were an amazing guest as i'm sure you always are but thank you for coming on to our show for the first time i hope i'll be invited uh, back on you know my my life is hopefully not over i'll uh (laughs) i'll uh, wing it with this baby elf (laughs) (laughs) a little baby elf well look i i hope you had fun on the show and i hope you name your baby dave so um, on that note, it's a girl. Uh, oh, no. that would be oh, then name it Johnny. Name it Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right. Well, um, it, obviously, if anyone wants to go check out Helen's channel, we'll put all the links in the description below. And remember, it's the Clueless Fangirl on YouTube, and we'll put in the Twitter links as well. If you heard of him, lad? If you heard of Sour? <laughs> But that is all we have time for today on the Council of Elrond. So please let us know what you guys thought of episode 7 and also where it ranks. Did you think it was one of the best ones or did you think it was a weaker one? Please let us know why and also if we've missed anything and tell us how you think the finale go. Who will Sauron be? Is it going to be Halbrand? Is it Adar? I really want to know what you what you think. And um, also if you want to become a Patreon, that's the best way to support both myself and Johnny. You can check out our links are also in the description there and especially if you're a house of the dragon fan because we're reviewing it on our patreon so you can Ooh. get to hear us talk all about house mm. of the dragon exactly yeah. Ooh. There you go. so yeah i like until that until next until next week guys namarie see you guys bye bye